This is how I draw feet that are flat on the ground. I will start with the legs first. Then for the shape of the feet, I'm going to make like a bell shape or a science flask. Maybe that is the shape because the feet are pointing straight at me. We don't want the toes to point down like typically um, some people tend to do. We want it to come forward to us so it's going to be in perspective and then I'll make a little line for the toes and they're going to be more like ovals because we're actually looking at the ends of the toes. The toenails on the tops of the toes are shaped kind of like rainbows because again it's the angle that we're looking from. So I think that drawing any body part is pretty much the same. You are making sure that you pay attention to the shapes that you see. Even if you think they're a little weird, go ahead and just make that shape. If you see a triangle, make a triangle. If you see an oval, make an oval. Don't think about if it makes sense or not because it's gonna be a little weird looking at first. Then I'm gonna add some shadows in here. Whenever you're drawing anything, you wanna think about a light source. Where is the light shining on the object? So you can add some shadows and give it a little bit more um, form to it. We want to feel as though we could reach out and touch these feet. Also, another thing about drawing any isolated body part I like to add part of the body parts that are around it. For instance, in this picture, the ankles and part of the shins, because nothing is just a body part by itself, especially if you're looking at shapes. The shapes around it are also going to create that part of the body. So it's very important how the feet connect to the legs and how the ankles pop out of the side. Again, it's paying attention to the shapes that you see, shapes and values are what really are going to make this part of the body identifiable and believable. So I'm going to soften my shading a little bit more, add a little bit more value in there, and then I'll also be adding some value with my blending stump, just to smooth it all out a little bit. And then I will also add a little bit more shadow around the bottom of the toes, because my light source is coming from above casting a shadow in between the toes and a little under the toes. I want to be careful not to leave parts of my feet white like the background, like the color of the paper, because chances are any area on these feet and legs are even in the light areas going to be some type of value. It won't just be white. Here are some feet that are going to be portrayed from the back. So we'll be looking at the ankles and the heel of the foot. So again, we'll start with the legs and get a general shape. 
The heel is a little ball at the bottom. And then the feet, they're not pointed directly in front of the person. They're pointed a little bit to the side. So we still have a little bit of a flask kind of shape there. A little bit different than the other. But we're also picking our light source and creating shadow in the areas where the light is not shining, which appears to be closer to the inside of the ankles and legs and a little bit underneath the feet. So again, the angle of these feet are slightly to the side, so we do see some. Otherwise, we would just have a round heel to look at. So we see a little bit of the feet and they fall off into the distance. And then we're gonna shade it a little bit and give this person a little bit of color. Even if this person is very pale, they will still be darker than the paper. So we have to make sure that there is some value everywhere on these feet. And then I will just touch up some of these shadows to make the forms pop out a little bit more. So try to resist the temptation to stretch the feet to the side or point them downward. Sometimes it's just as simple as these few shapes 